Today is day 186 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on here at Free Code Camp with something. 50 things down, so that's kind of cool. Challenges, activities, what do they want to call them? Items. 50 items down. That's what they are. Does that math check out? One item, 17, that's 18. Wow, and another 17 on the third. Really, 17 and 17. 34. I guess there was nothing Tuesday. Huh. And 15 items. Well, fascinating nonetheless. Uh, what are we looking at? So, all kinds of interesting things. Learn how Free Code Camp works. View this challenge. View solution. Oh, that's the entry thing with the photo, the people. They're all smiling at you. Welcome to Free Code Camp. That's what that challenge is. At least I think it is. We'll worry about that later. Let's let's dive into uh, wherever we are continuing on from. Where are we continuing on from? Are we not signed in? We are signed in. Something's different. What's... Oh, no, green means completed. No, green means frustrated. Green is bad. Green is good. There's a, a lot of confusion right now. Why are these gray? Oh, coming soon. Okay. So, what's happening now? I guess we go to our most recently completed lesson. Prioritize over one over another? Let's look at this and see what happens. Tiny cat, how are you doing? There we go. Look at that. So much better. Wow, look at this. So we've done 50 items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we'll be done with that for... Hey, hey, hey. Toes, right-clicking, not cool, little cat. Not cool at all. But uh, where were we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine left. Hot damn. And then we'll be done with the HTML5 and CSS. Then we have gear up for success. Then we have responsive design with bootstrap. That's another five-hour endeavor. Then we've got three hours of jQuery. Basic front-end development projects. That's 50 hours of fun. Holy frack. Basic JavaScript. 10 hours. Uh, the, the friggin' webcam. There we go, there we go. We can scroll the page. Webcam can stay. The web page can move. Because see, right here, line of sight, it's blocked. Yeah, with this guy. Totally blocked by the webcam. But here, ta-da, now I can see it. Blocked, not blocked. Blocked, not blocked. Just a little slice into my nightmare. Uh, what else are we looking at? So basic JavaScript, two hours of object-oriented and functional programming. Basic algorithm script, 50 hours of basic algorithm scripting. Good. Good. I, I mean, what else could one want to do except for 50 hours of basic algorithm scripting? Because 49 hours isn't enough. JSON API and AJAX. That's only two hours. 100 hours intermediate front-end development projects. Hey, it's increasing in difficulty. Intermediate al uh, algorithm scripting, another 50 hours. There's like a lot of stuff to do here.
That's just fascinating. I can't believe it. Advanced algorithm scripting. Oh, it really kind of ratchets up there. One, one after another. So now we're into advanced. We go straight from intermediate into advanced, just like that. Out of the frying pan into the fire. So that's validate US telephone numbers. Wow, these are like all things that can actually be useful in the real world. How cool is that? Advanced front end development projects, 150 hours, build JavaScript calculator, a tic tac toe game, and then claim five minutes, claim your front end development certificate. Wow. You know, despite all the 50 hours and 100 hours and blah, 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 and all that, it just doesn't seem that far away. Maybe it's because I've been chipping away at it for 186 days, but we're only a few days in here to, to free code camp. And it's just kind of all laid out right there in front of us. Claim your front end development certificate. Five schminutes. Look at that. Okay, so very cool. Let's actually focus on some of these, shall we? Uh, let's dive into... Well, we'll crack all these open just for fun. And you, and you. You get open, and you get open. Everybody's open. All right. Go time. HTML5 and CSS. The last, what is it, nine sections of this initial quest. Let's do this. Go time. Wait, no, not go time. Going time over here. We will reflect on what we did last. Prioritize one style over another. Create a CSS class called pink text that gives an element the color pink. Give your H1 element class of pink text. And what we were missing yesterday was the semicolon. I remember that because it wasn't working, but now it is and everything's great. Code long and prosper. Like live long and prosper, but it's code long and prosper. Yay, Star Trek. Everyone be happy. Uh, what are we doing? Override styles and subsequent CSS. From the top, our pink text class overrode our body elements CSS declaration. We just proved that our classes will overwrite the body elements CSS. So the next logical question is what can we do with our, uh, what can we do to override our pink text class? Aha! create an additional CSS class called blue text that gives us an element the color blue. Make sure it's below your pink text class declaration. Apply the blue text to your H1 element in addition to your pink text class, and let's see which one wins. Applying multiple class attributes to an HTML element is done with a space between like class one, class two. Cool. Uh, what else are we looking for? So that would be pink text, space, blue text. Fair enough. Note, it doesn't matter which order the classes are listed in the HTML element. So it could be blue text and then pink text and or vice versa. However, the order of the class declaration in the style section uh, is where it's important. The second declaration will always take precedence over the first because dot blue text is declared second. It overrides the attribute of pink of dot pink text so it comes later in the list ergo it will override cool so uh what are we looking for now you know what? we're not looking for anything all we are doing is typing stuff -da 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 -dee 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 -dee. Blue text. That's plus. No, that's an equal sign. Oh my god, we're totally missing keys. Alright. Now I'm 
my mind's racing. I, I had no idea we were so close to finishing off uh, the stuff, the thing, nine away from being done with the HTML and CSS section of our front-end development certificate journey here at Free Code Camp. Uh, not Free Code Camp. Something about something. Blue text. Color pink. I totally blanked. Totally blanked. That's what we're looking for right here. My bad. Blue. All right. Fantastic. We are running. Oh, we're not running our test yet because now we have to do food. Inside the same quote? It is inside the same quote. Blue text. Yeah, look at that, like magic. They said that it would happen in health class. You're out of sight. Boom. Things are loading. She's thinking, still thinking. Everyone's good. We've got green and pink and blues. Override class declarations by styling ID attributes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Override class declarations by styling ID attributes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so IDs take it to the next level with the little hash symbol. We just proved that browsers read CSS from top to bottom. That means that in e that means we're going to start over. That means that in the event of a conflict, the browser will use whichever CSS declaration came last. But we're not done yet. There are other ways that you can override CSS. Do you remember ID attributes? Let's override your pink text and blue text classes and make your H1 element orange by giving the H1 element an ID and then styling that ID. Give your H1 element the ID attribute orange text. Remember, ID styles look like this. H1 ID orange text, leave blue text and pink text classes on your H1 element. Create something. Create a CSS declaration for your orange text ID in your style element. Here's an example of what this looks like. Brown text, color brown. No, it doesn't matter whether you declare the CSS above or below the pink text class since ID attributes will always take precedence. Okay, so uh, let's do orange text. I think that's what they wanted. And color orange. Yes. With a semicolon to boot. What are we looking for now? They said do something with or without the class bit. We kind of just powered through that. Overriding you. Give your H1 element the ID attribute of orange text. Looks like this. Leave blue text and pink text classes on your H1. So now we're adding ID. I guess we could add ID after class. Or before. Orange text. Ta-da! It worked, mostly. We've underestimated you. Still not an accurate statement, but we're getting there. Once we have the certificate, I will believe them. Override class declarations with inline styles. So we've proven that ID declarations override class declarations, regardless of whether they're declared in your style element CSS. There are other ways you can override CSS. Do you remember inline style? Use an inline style <coughs> to keep breathing. Ugh, we'll get there. Damn, our 80-year-old man lung capacity. Okay. What what are we what are we looking at? The lack of oxygen has made us forget where we are. 
declared in your style element CSS. There are other ways that you can override CSS. Do you remember inline style? We do. We do. Use an inline style to try to make our h1 element white. Remember, inline style looks like this. h1 style equals color green. Leave blue text, pink text, classes on your h1 and ID. So let's go ahead and throw style into the mix. And what would they like the color to be? Green, was it? No. White. That's what they wanted. Style. Rack. White. Forgot. Forgot. But now you remember. Oh, that's not right. We need to do color. You're just typing words in there, Stephen, blindly. That's not how it works. But that's how it does. Boom. Beautiful. Run test. Way cool. Exactly. It is way cool. Now. Onwards. Override all other styles by using important. Fascinating. Okay. Yay. We just proved that inline styles will override all the CSS declarations in your style element. But wait. There's one last way to override CSS. This is the most powerful method of all. But before we do it, let's talk about why you would ever want to override CSS. In many situations, you will use CSS libraries. These may accidentally override your own CSS, so when you absolutely need to be sure an element has a specific CSS, you can use exclamation important. Let's go all the way back to our pink text class declaration. Remember that our pink text class was overridden by subsequent class declarations, ID declarations, and inline styles. Let's add the keyword exclamation important to your pink text elements color declaration to make 100% sure your H1 element will be pinked. Yes, pinked. Exactly. Past tense. Uh... An example of how to do this is color red importante. Good. So what are we looking for? Example of how to do... Are we doing it in the style portion or the inline portion? I think it's the... Oh, I don't even know. In many situations... You use blah, blah, blah. So you need to be sure to put an element specified. Go back to your pink text declaration. Overridden. Add the keyword to your pink text elements color declaration. Aha. So this is our pink text element. This is its color declaration. And we're adding it in here. Like so. Also, pink text class declaration should have blank override. Yeah, okay, they don't say where, but this, that's where they said to add it. At least that's how we just interpreted it, so. Importante. Nope, just checking. Pink, run it, passed with flying colors, technically passed with pink colors, huh? Uh, see that? See that? Because we just made pink important. All right. Using hex code for specific colors. Did you know there are th um, what? I wanted to say there, and then I saw other, but then I just gave up and wanted to say three. There's no three anywhere here in this statement. Did you know there are other ways? to represent colors in CSS. One of these ways is called hexadecimal code or hex code for short. We usually use decimals or base 10 numbers, which use symbols zero to nine for each digit. Hexadecimal or hex are base 16. This means it uses 16 distinct symbols like decimals. The symbol zero to nine represents values zero to nine then A, B, C, D, E, F represents values 10 to 15. 
altogether, 0 to f can represent a digit in hexadecimal, giving us 16 total possible values. You can find out more information about hexadecimal numbers here. We get to click a link. Be excited. Wikipedia hexadecimal, which I'm pretty sure Code Academy brought us here for hexadecimal as well for their uh, definition. So tons of fun, very fascinating. We can close out of that. Now, onwards. In CSS, we can use six hexadecimal bleh, digits to represent colors. Two each for red, green, and blue components. For example, hashtag or hash or pound, whatever you prefer calling the tic-tac-toe board. Zero, 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 zero is black and is also the lowest possible value. You can find out more information about RGB color system here. Another fun link we get to examine. Back to Wikipedia. RGB, and yet again, I'm drawing a blank, but I think Code Academy brought us here as well. Uh, let's back out of these. Replace the word black in our body elements background here with its hex code representation. Clickety click, shift, and trace. And six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I would like to note this works, but we only know that works because of Code Academy. The uh, if it's the two, because really what's happening, which they'll go over it later, I'm certain, but ABC would really be <laughs> AABBCC, like so and or whatever numbers you needed, but you get the picture. So that's why we'd be able to do just three zeros. But we will do six to appease the CSS gods, or the hexadecimal gods, whatever you, whatever you prefer to put on a pedestal. Your powers combined. Dee 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 dee. Use hex code to mix colors. To review hex codes, use six hex, uh, hexadecimal digits to represent colors. Two of each, red, green, blue, uh, red, green, and blue components. From these three pure colors, red, green, and blue, we can vary the amounts of each to create over 16 million other colors. For example, orange is pure red mixed with some green and no blue. In hex code, this translates to being FF. A500. Zero, zero. The digit zero is the lowest number in the hex code, represents a complete absence of color. The digit F is the highest number in the hex code and represents a maximum possible and represents the maximum possible brightness. Replace the color words in your style sheet with their correct hex codes. Okay. Dodger blue becomes this, green becomes that, orange becomes blah, and red becomes so forth. Let's do this. Red text. Copy. Maybe we should type it out. Gah, paste. Damn them. We'll, we'll type it out. Type it out. Bastards. I'm doing lowercase though, so. Yeah, take that. Authority. Yeah, look at that. They've got capital letters in their examples, but we're going to do lowercase. Be that rebel. Uh, what are we doing now? FFA500. Oh, crap. I followed their example. Friggin' sheep. Just following the herd. God damn. Lasted one example. We got red down. That's all that matters. It's the best color in that group they had to offer anyways. Um, although Dodger blue is fun. And green and orange. Not exactly decisive. Um, colors. Wait. 
no, we got it wrong. We were following their example bottom to top for some reason. I typed it out, so I get to copy it. Green, zero, zero. No. Hash stuff, zero, zero. FF, zero, zero. You know what was interesting? God, I'm drawing a blank on who it was. But they, they made the comment that... What is it? Uh, was it fives? Is it... It was... Badass? Yeah. Is, uh, it was blank, blank, blank is a badass shade of green. Get it? Because, see? And it is green, which I thought was so interesting. Because it is green. Wow, simple mind, simple pleasures. Great story, Stephen. Uh, let's let's finish this, shall we? I mean, there there are still homeless people out there in the world that we could be helping right now. So, or whatever these nonprofits contribute. I don't actually know what nonprofits we will be assisting. Could be homeless shelters. Maybe it's just after school programs. Nonprofit art and musical programs for your local school. We're still like 6,000 hours away from getting the certificates to be able to help with those, but we are on our way nevertheless. Uh, no, not copying. Why was I copying all that? Force a habit, which is why we're trying to break it. 299... 8 e 4 aha blue success run it Kool-Aid man says oh yeah that that is a fact that is a fact these are true all right how close are we to the aha look at this abbreviated codes See? See? They know what's going on. Look at this. See? FF0000. F00. Pretty cool. All right. Use abbreviated hex codes. Many people feel overwhelmed by the possibilities of more than 16 million colors, and it's difficult to remember hex codes. Fortunately, you can shorten it. For example, red hex code FF00 can be shorthand to... F00. The shorthand form gives one digit for red, one digit for green, one digit for blue. This reduces the total number of possi uh, possible colors to around 4,000. But browsers will interpret FF0000 and F00 as exactly the same color. Go ahead and try using the abbreviated hex codes to color the correct elements. Ask and you shall receive hope Hopefully fuchsia, red and fuchsia and green and something else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Typical. So F zero zero fuchsia is somewhere. F, zero F, there we go. Right there, Steven. Right there. Cayenne, zero F, F, and my guess is zero, zero F. No. Ah, uh, zero F, zero. It was all the combinations of F and zero. We've got F00, F0F, 0FF, zero zero and 0F0. Zero zero. Well, what's this with an extra F? Oh, more. Oh, no. Just kidding. That's not the one I wanted. This one. Darker blue. Okay. Healthy blue. Oh, that makes sense. 
because that's red. Uh, the first one's red. The second digit is for green. The third one is for blue. And zero is the lowest intensity. F is the highest. So it's just blue. Huh? See, we can read that, which is why this is just green. Hey, we can figure it out slowly. I mean, hopefully the world isn't waiting for us to save it via hex code cuz I don't think we're the we should be the first pick for that task. Is it takes us a while to figure out what the hex code is actually going to result in, but we'll figure it eventually. Off the hook onwards. I wonder how close we are to the end. I'm just dying to figure it out. Look at that. Two more. So there's this one and one more. Good, good times. All right. Use RGB values to color elements. Another way you can represent colors in CSS is by using RGB values. The RGB values for black looks like this. RGB, zero, zero, zero. RGB values for white looks like this, 255, 255, 255. Instead of using six hexadecimal, ugh, instead of using six hexadecimal digits, like you did with the hex code with RGB, you specify the brightness of each color with a number between zero and 255. If you do the math, the two digits for one color equal 16 times, I'm gonna wait, hold on, what's happening? If you do the math, the two digits for one color equal 16 times 16, which gives us 256 total values. So, oh yeah, zero to 255. So 255 plus one extra digit, which is zero, you get your 256. So RGB, which starts counting from zero, has the exact same number of possible values as hex code. Ah, cool. Look at that. Okay, 16 times 16, which gives us blah. Neat. Uh, let's replace the hex code inner body's element background with the RGB value for black. Challenge accepted. Urgeb. Oh, that's not right. We put in a stray D. Not, not helpful. And a number, and a comma, and a space, and a comma, and a space. Zero, zero, zero. Beautiful. Run test. Far out. And I believe this is the last one for this section. Oh my god, it is. Use RGB to mix colors. Yeah, you don't. Uh, okay. Use RGB to mix colors. Just like with hex code, you can mix colors in RGB using combinations of different values. Replace the color words in our style element with their correct RGB values. Okay, blue, blanky blank, red, like so, orchid, fascinating, and sienna. Also an interesting choice. So let's do red, urgeb, is zero comma space, zero comma space, two, fifty five. It's a very nice earth. Orchid, urgeb, and two eighteen comma spouse, one twelve. You're not Doug. Uh, 214. A D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Sienna. Something that rhymes with 160 and 82. Spells Sienna. And blue text is 
wait a second, we didn't follow the blue stuff, we followed the red one. I was like, hold on, 255 goes at the end. This is full of lies. Right here. Zero. Sneaky examples. Trying to take advantage of people who aren't paying attention like myself. Good thing they do that. Uh, do 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 do. Zero comma space. Zero comma space. Two fifty five. And look at that. Red and orchid and sienna and blue. Tons of fun. Let's run it. Most triumphant. What a great one to end on. Submit an answer to my next challenge. Does that actually bring us into a new thing? It does bring us into a new thing. Okay, you can code with other campers in your city by joining the local free code camp study group. Go to my next step. Click the button below to open our study group directory. Find your local study group and click it. This will take you to their Facebook group. Click the join button. Once someone from the group approves your join request, you'll get a notification within Facebook. You can go back and introduce yourself. Open the link with new to unlock this next step. We're going to hold off for now. Finish challenge. Oh, maybe. Uh, I guess. Open the link in the new tab. Hmm. Isn't there an onwards finish this challenge? Don't mind me. Hold the phone. <laughs> Checking out the stuff. There's a lack of completion. You can join nearby study group in person. Join study group closest to you. Page request uh, permission from your computer. Something about location data, free Code Camp Earth study group. I assume that's more planet wide. And you can also join study groups in other cities, or you can create one. I think we're good. Oh my god, it's a giant list of all the cities on the planet. Holy sh, we're not scrolling through that giant list. Yeah, sure, why not? Kilometers, man. That's something a little closer. There you go. Fifty? Eh, mm, no, no. Yarg. Okay, so we clicked on the link. Yeah, local meetup, blah, blah, blah. This is like a thing, guys. I just want to finish the challenge. Hmm. Map stuff. Well, it did say, you know what, let's go ahead and look at that. We'll, we'll go back. I didn't know if there was going to be any weird, weird things, but there was actually nothing all that exhilarating to not be seen. Um, yeah, good, good. It shows that it was completed. See, that's green, and this is, this is now got a grayed out completed thing. So I think we're good. I think. I don't know. Kind of a shot in the dark here. Not too sure.
All right, well, with that said, we are all good for today. Let's go ahead and close out of said activities. Free code camp. Finish the challenge. No idea. We will close out of this, close out of that. We may tinker more to figure out how to actually finish the thing, but... We'll cross that bridge later. In the meantime, we are jumping out of free code camp into OBS. Thank you again to anyone and everyone who may have stopped by to view the stream. Any and all views are greatly, greatly appreciated. The adventure continues tomorrow with day one... 187 of the year of streaming and learning to code. But in the meantime... We are stopping the stream. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it!